One of the things we learned, maybe the main thing we learned when we finally got access to thousands of hours of surveillance footage that the January 6th committee had been hiding, is that some of the people the media told you were terrorists, they were terrorists that need to go to prison, and who did go to prison, actually never committed terrorism of any kind, just the opposite. They just kind of wandered through the Capitol building. That's true of Jacob Chansley, the so-called QAnon shaman, the one the media told you should be killed. But he's hardly the only one. This is video of a man called Daniel Goodwin walking through the Capitol through an open door on January 6, 2021, at exactly 3.32 p.m. That is long after the doors were breached. Now, we got this video, the one you're watching now, from the Speaker of the House's office earlier this month. Mr. Goodwin's attorney tells us that the legal team was also provided this video. And in it, you can clearly see that Goodwin was inside for less than a minute. And when he was asked to leave, he left. So there's no dispute about any of that. It's all on tape. But the DOJ is still trying to send Daniel Goodwin to prison. And in the meantime, they have completely wrecked his life. You know. Do it. Do it. Jump it. Memes just keep getting better. Today is Wednesday, March 15th, 2023. New bombshell video debunks January 6th insurrection lie. DOJ to investigate the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. And the woman who trolled Dr. Fauci, Melissa Lively, joins the show. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Well, you may be looking around at the stock market right now, which is crashing. You may be looking at the banks, which are crashing. You may be looking at Joe Biden's economy, which is crashing, and thinking, uh, maybe there's some place that I need to put my money so that it is secure. Cure. And let me recommend, ladies and gentlemen, my friends at Allegiance Gold. Allegiance Gold has the highest rating in the industry. It has an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. And that is because, well, gold is a good hedge against government insanity. You don't have to put all your money into gold. You can actually convert your IRA or 401k into precious metals. And that can act as a safeguard against the government. This is a way to build wealth without the American dollar. This is a way to build wealth away from Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and all of the idiots that run our Congress and economy. Did you know that one of the banks that collapsed, Signature Bank, was actually run by Barney Frank? He was sitting on the board. Barney Frank's the guy who wrote the Dodd-Frank bill. This is the guy who wrote the actual bill. And his bank collapsed. Just to prove to you how imbecilic these members of our Congress are and how bad they are at banking policy. These are the problems with centralized banks and centralized banking policy. So get out of that system just a little bit. Just reduce your exposure a little bit with precious metals, ladies and gentlemen. Gold and silver are the only assets that build value without depending on the government. Protect yourself today. Right now, get up to $5,000 in free silver with a qualifying investment when you visit protectwithbenny.com or call 844-66-BENNY, protectwithbenny.com. Ladies and gentlemen, interesting new factors in the January 6th political prisoner trials. Man, a video dropped yesterday, a piece of unedited, uncensored body cam video that blew our minds and proves once and for all, verifiably, demonstrably, empirically, that the federal government is officially lying. Let me set this up for you. So earlier last year, Jacob Chansley was sentenced. He pled guilty. He pled out a sentence and he was given three years in prison, 41 months in prison. Now, what did you know about Jacob Chansley? You knew that he wore a Chewbacca hat. You knew that he was very interesting in the way that he dressed. Certainly a flamboyant uh, individual. Uh, certainly somebody who would catch your attention if you saw him in the street. And that is why Jacob Chansley was photographed so very much on January 6th. This was the face of January 6th. You've seen these images before. Him yelling, right? This is like the image of January 6th. This is what the press, and you can see every single one of these images come from a corporate media article. NBC, MSNBC, BBC. They made this man the face of of January 6th. And certainly Jacob Chansley, uh, again, is a loquacious individual who is, uh, you know, definitely has uh, a, a different cut of his jib, 
Let's let's just say. Now, I happen to like the Viking helmet. I happen to think he looks kind of cool. If I saw Jacob Chansley out in the desert, I'd be like, I want to go talk to that guy. But nonetheless, they made him the iconoclast of January 6th. And ladies and gentlemen, now after Tucker Carlson revealed at least that Jacob Chansley was escorted around the Capitol building, Jacob Chansley was escorted into the U.S. Senate chamber, as Tucker Carlson showed you on his bombshell program last week, which, by the way, broke records. Tucker Carlson had over four and a half million viewers per night. Just to give you perspective here, two million is around the average for a Fox News primetime. Tucker Carlson's doubling that, and he has 500,000 in the key demo, 25 to 54-year-olds. That's what all the advertisers want. And so Tucker Carlson just decimated. He had six times the viewership of CNN when he was broadcasting truth. Truth is powerful. Truth resonates. So this is what Tucker Carlson broadcast about Jacob Chansley, lo beloving, lovingly known as Chewbacca Man. Watch. Dangerous conspiracy theorist dressed in outlandish costume who led the violent insurrection to overthrow American democracy. For these crimes, Chansley was sentenced to nearly four years in prison, far more time than many violent criminals now receive. What did Jacob Chansley do to receive this punishment? To this day, there is dispute over how Chansley got into the Capitol building. But according to our review of the internal surveillance video, it is very clear what happened once he got inside. Virtually every moment of his time inside the Capitol was caught on tape. The tapes show that Capitol Police never stopped Jacob Chansley. They helped him. They acted as his tour guides. Here's video of Chansley in the Senate chamber. Capitol Police officers take him to multiple entrances and even try to open locked doors for him. We counted at least nine officers who were within touching distance of unarmed Jacob Chansley. Now so you can see there Jacob Chansley getting escorted around the Capitol by police. Now, why is this germane to this conversation? Let me tell you, as somebody who has had a Capitol Hill press badge for 10 years of my life, who worked, who I had an office inside of the U.S. Capitol, I was there as a reporter and journalist, the Capitol is designed as a labyrinth. The Capitol is very tough to get around. There are not giant, buzzing Disneyland signs saying, this way to the Senate! It is hard to get through the Capitol. Most of the people inside the Capitol were lost entirely. That's why they spent most of their time inside the crypt a place designed to house George Washington's body, but never actually did. Most of these people were lost. What happened here was that the cops were showing and delivering Jacob Chansley to the Senate because he couldn't find his own way. That's what was going on. Because inside of the U.S. Capitol, it's a very, very complicated building that has been built and rebuilt many, many times in American history. They've added sections to it. They've expanded it. And it doesn't make no sense inside of the Capitol building. So that's what's going on. Jacob Chansley would have never made it to the Senate without a police escort. He would have never made it to the Senate without them bringing him there. Why did they bring him there? Well, that's a good question. Did they try and make him the face of January 6th? Were they trying to set up a photo op? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they got their photo op. You can see here again with the Google results. All you have to do is type in Jacob Chansley and you see millions of photos of him on the Senate floor. They got their images. They got their color revolution photos, right? This was the image that they wanted, and they got it. This is why I think a lot of these Capitol Hill police officers need to be brought in for questioning. Like, these guys need to testify. Like, why? Why were you doing this? Doesn't make, doesn't make any sense. Why did a dozen Capitol police officers armed with badges escort Jacob Chansley to the floor of the Senate? Now, now Tucker Carlson broadcast that, and everyone started calling for Jacob Chansley to be free. Jacob, free Jacob Chansley was trending across social media. And so CNN publishes this article saying, whoa, 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 wait a second. Security footage is not telling you the full picture. Tucker Carlson is lying to you. Here, in the first, the first, the, you know, they never bury the lead when it has to do with defending the deep state here. Check out CNN. Court filings by federal prosecutors say that the video did not show Chansley uh, his full actions, facing off with officers half an hour outside of the Senate chamber, or when Chansley refused to be escorted out of the Capitol by an officer and only left after being forcibly removed. This is what CNN published this weekend. Let me bring your attention here to refuse to be escorted out of the Capitol and only left when he was forcibly removed. 
ladies and gentlemen, we can confirm to you right now that that is a lie. That is a bold-faced lie to you from your federal government. And we have the proof in our hot little hands. Ladies and gentlemen, new footage dropped, also from the government, fascinatingly, of a police body cam video that was recorded on an officer's chest as he attempted to remove forcibly the uh, protesters from inside of the Senate chamber. They were delivered to the Senate chamber by police, and then the police escorted them out. Now, we're going to play this clip for you. I'm going to be on screen. I'm not, we're going to break it down. Remember, the feds are saying in court that they had to forcibly remove Jacob Chansley. I'm going to show you that footage right now. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so this is the police first bursting onto the floor of the Senate chamber. Jacob Chansley had been praying on the floor of the Senate chamber. He'd been praying for the police officers. What I'm about to show you is going to absolutely blow your mind. This decimates every lie that the feds have told you about January 6th. Continue. Sorry, up, here. Go. up here, the guy is here. Okay, so then, and now they're going to go. Jacob Chansley is sitting there in the well of the Senate. He'd been Let's praying. Go. Thank you. So there, right there. Stop. That was your first J J6er thanking the police. Now, I want to bring your attention to something here. Please watch and observe. Is anyone behave violently towards these officers? Does anyone even insult them? Does anyone come at them? Because that's the lie that you've been told. Continue. Okay, there's Chansley. Here's Chansley. Well, look at that. Wow. Stop. God bless you guys. That megaphone that you hear is Jacob Chansley with his megaphone saying, God bless you to the police officers who he just prayed for. Now, what this looks like to me is a absolute textbook definition of peacefully following an officer's orders. That's what this looks like to me. Let me know if you agree in the comment section. Let's continue. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Thank you, officers. God bless you guys. Thank you for your patience. We really appreciate it. Stop. Thank you for your patience. We really appreciate it, says Jacob Chansley to the officers as he's following their orders peacefully. I just showed you the federal government's filing saying that Jacob Chansley had to be forcibly removed and he did not follow the officer's orders. Where? I am watching this from the perspective of a police officer as Jacob Chansley not only thanks them, prays for them, and does peacefully what they are telling him to do. Now you could argue, ladies and gentlemen, that Jacob Chansley should have never been in the Senate chamber, and I could argue that he would have never gotten there without a police officer escorting him. Continue. Not as glorious a person, is he? Not as glorious. It smells like an old church. Thank you, guys. Stop. Now one of those guys, the only thing insulting in this video is a guy, arguably insulting, is that a guy says it smells like an old church. Now, let me, I, I can confirm for you, I've been in the Senate chambers. It does smell like an old church, an old Methodist church in Missouri, in the hills, in the back country. It does totally smell. It's an old building. And also, a lot of the senators smell. They're old, dusty, beleaguered individuals. I, I, I physically watched Bernie Sanders, Danderfee, steal a newspaper once. Bernie Sanders is famous for stealing his neighbor's Washington Post. They're old, dusty, Danderfee individuals, these senators. So, that fact check true on that guy. We gotta send him out there. there he goes. Here, we'll play like the, the last. So now they walk through the Senate halls. I'll give you the VO here, uh, the play-by-play. -play. So now they walk through the labyrinthy Senate halls. It's very tough to know where you're going inside the Senate. Old building. Lots of stairways. Here they walk out of the building. Police are escorting them once more out of the building. Jacob Chansley says, freedom, without fighting the officers or without resisting. 
following orders peacefully. Jacob Hansley, he's a character. He says, freedom! Freedom! Okay, have you ever seen this footage? This is unbelievable. Freedom! Okay, now I'm going to show you my expertise of the building. Where are they going? So here, they're not going to show you where they turn. Right there, down that hallway, is the exit of the Capitol. There, there is probably five feet to the actual door inside of what is the carriage entrance. It's the entrance that's underneath the staircase of the Capitol, where Jacob Chansley then exited the building. So they have now removed Jacob Chansley, and he is going to walk out of the building. Now, that's where the video stops. So we haven't found the end of this video. But I have seen no evidence presented that Jacob Chansley fought these officers or didn't just do exactly as he was told by these police officers. So this seems like exculpatory evidence that directly refutes what the federal government is arguing in court. But the federal government didn't produce these videos. The federal government actually withheld these videos, which is a violation of the Brady rule as our in-house attorney told us last week, Mike Davis, watch. There is a Supreme Court case called Brady versus Maryland from 1963 that says that prosecutors must make available to defense counsel, defendants and defense counsel, exculpatory evidence, evidence that, that would tend to show that they're innocent of the crime uh, uh, with which they're charged. And you can't just say, look, there are 44,000, we don't even know if Jacob Chansley's first lawyer even had access to these videos back in September of 2001 when he uh, when Jacob pled guilty to these bogus crimes and got sentenced to 51 months in prison uh, but even if he even if the justice department said sure uh, defense counsel you can go to the capitol remember it's 44,000 hours of tapes and judge Royce Landworth should order a sh uh, issue a show cause order asking why he should not find Brady violations here and sanction these attorneys and throw out Jacob Chansley's conviction. Now, So Mike Davis, one of the smartest lawyers on planet Earth, the only reason that Donald Trump has a Supreme Court right now, and three appointees on the Supreme Court, is that Mike Davis knows his way around the legal system and knows how to fight in Washington, D.C. And Mike Davis is sitting there saying, Jacob Chansley should have his entire case thrown out by this judge because they violated the Brady rule and they withheld evidence. And what we have just showed you, not because your boy Benny is sitting here trying to argue for the release of, but like, we're showing you federal video camera footage. This is not my opinion. This is reality. And you know, people are actually getting their cases thrown out because the police officers have escorted them around the Capitol. We'll get to that in just one minute. People are being fully exonerated because police officers welcomed them in and waved them in. If police officers with a badge and a gun are waving you in, aren't they accessory to the crime? What does that mean? Well, this is causing people, including the most powerful people in the world, to say, wait a second, everything is wrong here. Elon Musk saying that the public was misled. Elon Musk tweeted with the bombshell uh, uh, revelations on Tucker Carlson's show. Uh, this was Jacob Chansley getting brought through the Capitol by police officers. This is crazy. The public was misled. Elon tweeted last Friday, free Jacob Chansley, when video surfaced of Jacob Chansley standing at the doors saying, hey, everyone needs to go home. Everyone needs to remain peaceful. What Jacob Chansley does in this video is he plays Donald Trump's, Donald Trump's message saying, go home peacefully. And then Jacob Chansley repeats that message. And then when fact checkers fact checked Elon Musk on this issue, this was a tweet from the great executive producer of this show, ALX The Lord. Please go follow ALX and his account. You will not be disappointed. Elon Musk clearly follows that account because day doesn't go by without an Elon Musk tweet or retweet or reply. Capitol Police literally opened the Senate chamber door for him on camera. But who are you going to believe, fact checkers or your own lying eyes? Who are you going to believe, fact checkers or your own lying eyes? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, these cases are starting to fall apart. I have a really, really amazing article here about a man from New Mexico who was released, found not guilty of all charges. Go home. Be free. Because he was able to prove, and that's a photo of the man inside of the U.S. Capitol, he was able to prove that the police welcomed him in. 
He said, whoa, wait a second. The police waved me in. So what is this about? I didn't behave. I didn't hurt anything. I didn't damage anything. I didn't hurt anyone. The police waved me in. And that's what people are beginning to argue. Tucker Carlson had a J6 defendant on his show yesterday who was saying, wait a second. I was in the Capitol for less than one minute. The police, again, waved me in and I followed their orders. We're on dubious legal territory here. Check this out. This is video of a man called Daniel Goodwin walking through the Capitol through an open door on January 6th, 2021 at exactly 3.32 p.m. That is long after the doors were breached. Now, we got this video, the one you're watching now, from the Speaker of the House's office earlier this month. Mr. Goodwin's attorney tells us that the legal team was also provided this video. And in it, you can clearly see that Goodwin was inside for less than a minute. And when he was asked to leave, he left. So there's no dispute about any of that. It's all on tape. But the DOJ is still trying to send Daniel Goodwin to prison. And in the meantime, they have completely wrecked his life. You know, Goodwin joins us now, along with his lawyer, Carol Stewart. Thanks to both of you for coming on. First to you, Daniel. Your, your story, I, I think, is similar to the story of many people in your position. But just give us a sense of what the federal government has done to you for the crime of wandering around the Capitol for one minute and leaving when asked. Thanks for having me on, Tucker. Yeah, it's uh, what they've done is I had to spend um, about a month incarcerated pretrial and then about a year in pretrial um, home confinement. And uh, I was facing 20 years uh, and now I'm still facing one year. He was facing 20 years in jail for walking through a door that a cop was holding open and then following police orders. This is insanity. This is this is all insanity. These people are actual political prisoners. But as he says, it's more like a hostage situation because prisoners have rights. Now, you know, what's interesting about this narrative collapsing is it's collapsing on both ends. OK, so it's collapsing on the Tucker Carlson end. Right. Which is the, uh, you know, basest influencer end, who's like, what's happening here is wrong. It's also collapsing on the federal end and the law enforcement end. Now you're having police officers turn on the regime. In fact, the man who was in charge that day, his name's Stephen Sund. He was the chief of police. Now, he's not able to act unless Nancy Pelosi orders it. Constitutionally, Nancy Pelosi's in charge of this building. And so on that day, what was Nancy Pelosi doing exactly? Well, she was filming a documentary, and she certainly wasn't taking police chief Stephen Sun's requests for help calls. Watch. Um, there was a number of um, requests. I went on January 3rd requesting uh, the National Guard from Paul Irving. That was the first request for the, uh, for the National Guard. I then went to Mike Stinger, who's the Senate Sergeant Arms. Now, Paul Irving uh, is uh, politically appointed by Speaker Pelosi. Uh, he initially, when I asked for the National Guard on January 3rd, which was a uh, Sunday, it was the first day of the uh, new Congress, uh, he said specifically, quote, I don't like the optics. Uh, and besides, the intelligence didn't uh, support it. His concern for the optics, I believe, goes back to Pelosi's decision that, or um, statement that he, she referred to federal agents and uh, National Guard on the tra on streets of uh, America as stormtroopers. And I think she just didn't want the look of stormtroopers up on the Hill. And then come January 6th, and I think what your, what your viewers don't under, realize is the restrictions I have as the chief of police. I'm one of the only chiefs in the United States. I am the only chief in the United States that has a federal law, a law passed by members of Congress, that prevents me from calling in any federal resources, either in advance, uh, like I tried to do on January 3rd, or even while I'm under attack, without going and getting the politically appointed uh, Sergeant Arms approval. So at 12.53, we're attacked on the west front of the Capitol. I'm watching my officers getting brutally beaten. I pick up the phone at 12.55, I call uh, MPD for assistance. They're our, our partner agency right, uh, right next door. And then at 12.58, I call Paul Irving, uh, Speaker Pelosi's appointee to the Capitol Police Board. Ladies and gentlemen, this man called and called and called, and he got no response for 71 minutes. He goes on in that interview to say it took nearly 80 minutes. Now, what happened in those 80 minutes? Well, the, the mob breached the Capitol. We'll say this, as we said it many times before, don't hit cops, don't fight cops. No matter what you do, you're a hooligan. If you fight cops, you belong in prison. So if you fought a cop, you do belong in jail. It doesn't matter if you're Antifa, 
who attacked Charlie Kirk last night. We'll get to that in just a second. Or if you're somebody who was inside of this crowd on January 6th. Hit a cop, go to jail. Those are the rules. It applies to both sides. I don't care if you're wearing a red hat. But I'm talking about the people who is the vast preponderance of this crowd on January 6th, who kind of like wandered helplessly and aimlessly through the Capitol because they were waved in by cops? Well, that doesn't make any sense. How do you charge those people? And more importantly, why would Nancy Pelosi wait for 70 minutes before the crowd breached the U.S. Capitol in order to order in federal troops to help? Nancy Pelosi had been offered federal troops by Donald Trump, 20,000 of them. She refused. Nancy Pelosi then waited for these people to breach the building. Was this a setup? I mean, you have to start answering that question. Now, I've been speaking with a member of Congress who's going to go public with me, who says they know for a fact that there were confidential human informants by the FBI there on that day. They know for a fact they have verifiable, provable evidence. They have the earpieces. They have the communications. Ladies and gentlemen, this there was a federal involvement in this. And that's why some people call it the Fed surrection. Were they waiting to get their photo of Jacob Chansley, the shaman, on the floor of the Senate? Were they setting him up? Were they creating a narrative because they know there's enough useful lobotomized idiots to just believe it all without any nuance? Well, I mean, Occam's razor says yes. Says yes, that's exactly what they do. And that's exactly why Nancy Pelosi left Stephen Sund out to dry. Stephen Sund straight up says, straight up calls Pelosi out on national TV. This is the Capitol Police head of security. This is the chief. This is the man in charge saying Pelosi left me to die. You don't get a more damning. You don't get a more damning. Hellfire. Brimstone. Critique than this. I mean, honestly, you should be for cops getting the assistance they need. Nancy Pelosi, let this man twist in the wind. Go. Speaker of the House in charge of security at the Capitol. So you have the politically appointed Capitol Police Board that's put uh, in place by, you have uh, the sergeant arms that's put in place by Pelosi. You have the uh, Senate sergeant arms that's put in place by the uh, Senate leadership. And then you have the architect of the Capitol that's put in place by the, uh, the president. So you have three voting members. I'm a non-voting member. I'm the only non-politically appointed non-voting member. Uh, and that's kind of how the security oversight works. Uh, but it was Paul Irving who immediately said, I'm going to run it up the chain. I'll never forget that. Running up the chain. His chain of command ends at Speaker Pelosi. And I had to wait 71 minutes to finally get an approval at 2 at uh, 209 p.m. before I could finally reach out and start calling in federal assistance. 71 minutes when my men and women fought on the uh, brutally, I mean, fought heroically to prevent the uh, Capitol from being defended. I mean, from being penetrated. And it took 80 minutes before the first window was broken. So those were critical, essential minutes that we we're losing. He lays it out right there perfectly. 80 minutes. They waited until the Capitol was breached to respond. And what do we know now? Now we know verifiably that the federal government is destroying evidence against J6 defendants. Check this out from Julie Kelly. Julie Kelly talking about a more complicated issue than we have time for this morning, but let me summarize it for you. The FBI was supposed to deliver pieces of germane evidence to the defendants in a J6 trial. The FBI, uh, through their own incompetence, sent not just the germane messages, but all the messages that they were trying to hide from the defendants. This was a huge error by the FBI. They disclosed a ton of classified information. And what do we learn in those disclosures? Again, this is a massive FBI mistake, and the FBI admits it. They're trying to stop the trial because the FBI just outed themselves. Well, Julie Kelly here in this thread points it out beautifully. Ladies and gentlemen, the federal government is lying to you. They did have confidential human informants in the audience, and now they're lying in court documents. And they're trying to cover up what they did. They're trying to destroy evidence. So here's what Julie Kelly shows from the leaked messages from the FBI that the FBI unwittingly sent to the defense. So they're trying to delete messages inside of their FBI's links messaging system. They're attempting to withhold those messages, which is illegal. The Brady rule means you have to give exculpatory evidence to those who are on the defense. 
inside of any trial. What messages did the FBI concealer delete? Here's a message sent from a confidential human informant said, edit out that I was present. What? So they're editing out confidential human informants. They're trying to hide that. Brazen lawlessness at the FBI is the biggest January 6th case. Boss instructs FBI agents to destroy hundreds of items of evidence. This is a slam dunk case of of seditious conspiracy. Why is the FBI destroying evidence? That's wild. Destroy, look at this, look at this piece. Destroy 338 items of evidence. Even more egregious, the FBI accessed emails between one of the defendants and his attorneys. So they're spying on the defendants. The people who need to go to jail are the people who are breaking these laws. And this this should be absolutely and completely thrown out just on procedural measures by the court. And that's what's happening. People are being set free, actually. These, these defendants are arguing that Tucker Carlson's bombshell revelations uh, mean that they need to throw this trial out. This is a mistrial along with these leaked FBI texts. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, people are getting off. New Mexico man gets set free, found not guilty because police waved him into the building. Yet Jacob Chansley is serving nearly four years in prison because police waved him in and ushered him around the entire time he was in police presence, being allowed to do whatever he wanted to do. Doesn't make any sense. I'll tell you something. Uh, There is a criminal and domestic terrorist element in our society. Uh, It's not wearing a red hat. It's wearing a black face mask. We saw that uh, in full display last night with my friend and ally, Charlie Kirk, as he spoke at uh, University of California, Davis. This is the university right uh, in San San Francisco. It's uh, across the street from Nancy Pelosi's district, one of the most liberal institutions in uh, the country. Antifa. This is Antifa breaking through the doors. You'll watch the glass smash here. This is from Charlie's speech last night. These protesters behaved more violently and in a more terroristic manner than anyone on January 6th. You see the door smash and open there? Guys, you got to not turn your uh, got to not turn your cell phone cameras when you're filming. Come on. Rookie mistake there. But anyway, the uh, the terrorists the black-clad BLM Antifa terrorists from last night, those people were arrested. There were multiple arrests made last night, and they uh, smashed windows and tried, uh, again, they tried to, I mean, if they got their hands on Charlie, they, they would have tried to kill him. Mark my words. So very, very good that we're cataloging this. Where's the feds on this, huh? Well, isn't this an act of hate? Isn't this an act of terrorism? Where's Merrick Garland? Where's our federal government? Have you ever heard a story of like an Antifa prosecution? Where are these people going into prison? On day one of Donald Trump's administration, I know it because I was physically there and I physically watched it. On day one, Antifa rioted through Washington, D.C., burned down cars, burned down buildings, set cars on fire, smashed, grabbed, looted, burned the place to the ground, the nation's capital. Uh, Virtually all of them we're set free We can't live inside of a society uh, with two tiers of justice. And we can't live inside of a society that has open domestic terrorism running around on the streets, masquerading uh, as leftists. These people are fascistic and we're glad that we caught it on film. We're glad we got that cell phone footage, ladies and gentlemen, because cell phone footage is very important these days. Everyone is a journalist online. So you want to make sure that you have reliable cell phone coverage. That is why I trust Patriot Mobile with the cell phone coverage at The Benny Show. We trust Patriot Mobile because Patriot Mobile has the largest, most reliable network in America. And they are available on all three of the major networks. They are in your area. You can get service. We went to East Palestine and we had great service with Patriot Mobile. Ladies and gentlemen, they offer a coverage guarantee. If you're not happy with your coverage, you can switch to a different network for free Without changing carriers, Patriot Mobile is an American company. They have America and American-based supply chains and technicians and a board, all of it based here in America. They support free speech and the sanctity of life, the Second Amendment, 
and our military and our first responders, ladies and gentlemen. 100% U.S.-based customer service team, and you should go there today and switch your cell phone coverage. Get out from underneath these woke companies. Stop giving them your money. Go to patriotmobile.com backslash Benny or call them right now, 878-PATRIOT. Get free activation today with the offer code Benny. Stand together and support companies that share our values. PatriotMobile.com backslash Benny's. All right. Well, speaking of uh, companies that do not share our values, ladies and gentlemen, the SVB Bank collapse. Silicon Valley Bank. Actually, that collapse was right around the corner from where Charlie was speaking last night. Silicon Valley Bank collapse is to be probed by federal investigators. Oh, I wonder who they'll find. They'll find a bunch of Democrat donors and people who worked for Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and they'll do nothing about it. But we'll see. Here's the news. Quickly, Jake, we're seeing reports the Justice Department and the SEC are now investigating Silicon Valley Bank. What do you know about that? That's right. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that the SEC and DOJ are looking into what uh, led to this collapse. We also know, uh, thanks to a great reporting from my colleague Brian Chung, uh, that layoffs took place at Silicon Valley Bank before this. And so a lot of questions coming up today about how we got to the place we did uh, on Friday for Silicon Valley Bank. Okay, so here's what we know. We know that the executives at Silicon Valley Bank traded their stocks right before the collapse. Some of them made multi-millions including the CEO and COO. Becker, uh, who was the CEO, he he made, he sold 12,000 shares of the stock on February 27th. That's 2.3 million in cash. I mean, this is just open criminality. Uh, We also know that, of course, the bank went under because of their own incompetence and the federal government's incompetence because the federal government used a, leaf blower to helicopter free money into our economy for years and years and years. The law of gravity applies to economics and that free money eventually had a cost associated with it. The SVB bank, along with a lot of different banks during the coronavirus pandemic, were sitting on mountains of cash like the Joker and Batman, and they didn't know what to do with it. So they burnt it on U.S. government bonds. Now, those bonds became worth less as the interest rates hiked, as they always were going to. And then SVB, which didn't have to sell their bonds, they got greedy. They sold their old bonds, which did not, which had like a 2% rate of return, and they got a $2 billion loss. That was reported through the system, very small circles. And these VC backers said, yo, you should go take your money out of this bank. These, this bank is making bad moves. And it turns out that those bad moves uh, were absolutely predictable because this bank was far more interested on social justice, social credit, far more interested in virtue signaling than they were ever in banking. They were packed with Obama officials and Hillary donors and improv actors. That's right. Meet the SVB board of directors. These are not serious people. They were just trying to get super rich off a federal government that printed cash so fast the machines melted down. Here are the libs of Silicon Valley Bank. Part of the problem is leadership, as you might have guessed. The board of directors at SVB comprised 12 people, most of whom are not financial experts. I think in hindsight now we can say, well, obviously. For example, you have Mary Miller, who finished third in a Democrat primary for Baltimore mayor in 2020, served as the undersecretary for domestic finance at Obama's Treasury Department from March 2012 to September 2014. Another director, Kate Mitchell, a board member since 2010, contributed $50,000 to Hillary Clinton's campaign fund in 2016. And when President Trump won, she was so upset that she went to a shrine in Kyoto, Japan, that Thanksgiving to pray. There is one director with banking experience, Tom King, the former CEO of investment banks at Barclays. However, King was accused of retiring from this job because he wanted to avoid UK legislation, holding senior bankers directly responsible for their own mistakes. Oh, okay. So let's just pack our banking board with a bunch of diversity hires who are far more concerned about the color of your skin than fiduciary obligations or banking. People who are obsessed with race and gender like Nazis. It's Nazi ideology. I mean, I'm, just because the skin color isn't the same doesn't mean it's not Nazi ideology to be obsessed with somebody's skin color, obsessed with their race. These people are totally and completely obsessed, and they spent all their time making these cringeworthy videos about how obsessed they were with social justice, with empowering female, empowering black voices, 
dude, you're a bank. Stop lecturing me. Why are you trying to behave like a political arm of the Democrat Party? You're supposed to keep my money secure and safe. Well, now we know the answer because they were staffed by the Democrat Party and members of Hillary Clinton's campaign, Barack Obama's campaign, Joe Biden's campaign, failed Democrat politicians. You just go get a banking job. Isn't that great? You can like fall off the wagon, you can suck, and you just go right into the financial sector. It's perfect. It's perfect. We're run by the, just the smartest people. And ladies and gentlemen, they made such cringe. Uh, we've been seeing some of these videos go viral of what these bankers were doing. Instead of watching out for their customers and their depositors and their investors, uh, they were making woke videos. Signature Bank, which is a bank that deep banked Donald Trump. LOL, the Trump curse continues. These people kicked Donald Trump out of their bank because Donald Trump was such a bad man. And we like all skin colors except for the color orange, right? So that's the one. Orange man must go. Orange man bad. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what these people were doing before they collapsed. This is, again, the bank that was run by Barney Frank, the guy who wrote the Dodd-Frank bill, named after Barney Frank. This is supposed to be the legislation that's supposed to protect stuff like this from happening. He's on the board of this bank. I don't think he's in any of these videos, but this is this one is going viral. It's so cringe. You got to watch it. It's our nuclear cringe for the day. Watch. Dude, you're a bank that has billions of dollars and my little, our little like production quality here is like 400 times better than yours. <laughs> uh, guys, you're not spending your money on uh, the right things. These banks were far more interested in political programming than they were in financial programming, which is wrong. The laws of gravity apply. You go woke, you go broke. Signature Bank boss hosted company seminar on gender-neutral pronouns, they and here, five months before the third largest bank failure in U.S. history. I guess we've played our nuclear cringe for the day. Can we just do a regular cringe alert for this guy and his pronouns? Mr. White Privilege? Go. The most common pronouns that folks are familiar with are she and he becoming much more common. And I, you know, I don't know if there's anyone in the signature bank world, but probably you have clients that use they, them as pronouns. Um, they're gender neutral pronouns on purpose. We talked about folks that are non-binary that intentionally don't identify as male or female. So some of those folks use they, them as their pronouns. Z is another gender neutral pronoun. Um, and the other part of that would be here spelled H I R. And then there's some folks that say, don't use any pronouns for me, just use my name. So uh, I use he, him as my pronouns, but I'll go through all of these to talk about what they would sound like if I used each one. How about a pronoun that says fiduciary obligation? Those are my pronouns. How about that pronoun? Again, wokeness is a cancer and it is destroying this country at a brisk pace. And all it really is is virtue signaling for people that have no virtue. These people are not virtue. If they were virtuous, they would have protected their debtor, their debitors, their depositors, and their investors. These people have no virtue. They have no competency. And as Elon Musk recently uh, amplified, wokeness, I think it was a Jordan Peterson tweet, uh, wokeness essentially replaces competent people with incompetent people. That is the end goal. And it makes everything worse. And it's true. And now you're starting to see the contagion across uh, the banking industry. The stock market is in collapse today. Uh, Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse falls to an all time low after bank admits material weakness. The issue here is that you have a Lehman Brothers subprime mortgage issue with our banking sector. I, I believe in gold. I buy gold like this isn't an ad, but like there's a real problem. There's a bomb. There's a trillion dollar bomb that sits inside of our financial system right now, which is all of these bonds 
that were issued at an interest rate that was like 2%, and now the interest rate is like 7%. And so those bonds, of course, are going to get more money over time. So you want to offload your worthless government bonds, the bonds that make virtually no money, and go buy the new ones, which make a lot of money. So the government is going to incentivize people to do that, but the problem is you have all these worthless government bonds, you're going to actually collapse the credit of the United States of America. It's, it's, it's not going to be pretty. And you're starting to see this happen in slow motion. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want a, uh, I mean, if you want Donald Trump for 2024, if you want people to, like, if you want people to get back to sanity, like, continue. High inflation rates, high unemployment, uh, high consumer price index indexing. I mean, we're headed for a collapse. We're heading for total and complete stagflation inside of the economy. And, um... You know, let's hope that the check that Jesse Smollett wrote to the Nigerian brothers uh, didn't bounce. You know, it's 3500 bucks to beat yourself up. Black on black crime, ladies and gentlemen. Hope uh, Jesse Smollett is not uh, beating himself up over this new Fox Nation uh, expose with these brothers. We are cracking up. These are, we're like losing it over these clips. This is the funniest clips on the internet right now are these two Nigerian brothers, the Osindaro brothers, who have finally gone public about the hoax. Not only that, they're like reenacting the hoax on camera, talking about how they gave Jesse Smollett a noogie in the street to try and make it look like he was beat up and how Jesse Smollett gave him a script. He's an actor. He's an actor. He gave him a script to read from. So all those MAGA country lines, all those like all the all the racist lines, the N words that were dropped, that were like repeated time and time again. That was all in his script. He's the racist. He's the enemy. There is a supply and demand problem for racism in America. So much so that Jesse Smollett has to pay two black guys to beat him up. And now they're going public and it's hysterical. Watch. He was in character the whole time. So you think you guys are believable white supremacists? 100%. Look at Okay, first of all, <laughs> I've been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. I've never seen so many people hitch their wagon to a story to advance their agenda. I knew there was going to be a media frenzy. We need to catch the guys that perpetrated this crime. We were the ones that did it. Yeah, it was us. <laughs> <laughs> It's oh, so God. crazy. Like, is it ever I grew up, remember we had Millie Vanilli, and they yes. were like a pop band who didn't yes. sing the songs? They're the mini, Millie Vanilli of hate crimes. I know. And they're outing it. They're like, no, no, we had nothing to do with this. It wasn't a real thing. And ladies and gentlemen, we are very much looking forward to watching that in our free time. We encourage you to go watch it on Fox Nation. This is a, uh, uh, maybe we'll, maybe we can get the clip ready. We got to get the clip. We'll play it at the end of the show. Let's get the clip of them like going through how they beat up Jesse. Smollett. They do a play by play. They go back to the exact place where they beat up Jesse Smollett. <laughs> and uh, Jesse Smollett again is he served six days in jail. He got 150 days in the Cook County Jail. He served six days. His stuff is out on appeal. He's gonna have to prove somehow that this isn't real. I mean, he was absolutely castigated by the judge in this case. And 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 he's supposed to go to jail. Now, if his appeal fails, he goes right back to prison. Now, remember, everyone thought that because he's friends with Michelle Obama, powerful people in D.C., he's not going to go to prison. Well, that's not true, ladies and gentlemen. And powerful people in D.C. can go to jail. We asked Jim Jordan about Dr. Fauci potentially going to prison this last week. Jim Jordan was on the program. And his comments on Dr. Fauci made a lot of news talking about potentially sending Fauci to prison for lying to Congress, among other things, obviously. It went like this. And the other thing I wanted to ask you is, you know, you've been vilified on the far right. I know you know that. Um, and we've seen Elon Musk tweet that his pronouns, uh, he's the owner of Twitter, that his pronouns are prosecute uh, Fauci. Others in the GOP have talked about arresting you and prosecuting you. Um, for your handling of COVID. What's your response to that, uh, your response to Musk, and, and what has that been like for your family? Well, I mean, there's no response to that craziness, Jim. I mean, prosecute me for what? What are, what are they talking about? <laughs> I mean, I wish I could figure out what the heck they were talking about. I think they're just going off the deep end. 
that's the answer to your first question. So that was Dr. Fauci. So correction, guys, I got my clips mixed up here. That was Dr. Fauci on CNN saying, prosecute me for what? That's an exact response to us asking Jim Jordan about prosecuting him. So Dr. Fauci runs out of his rat hole, scurries to the nearest TV camera that he possibly can get in front of, you know, licks, brushes his hair back, his, his ears, his giant rat ears back, sniffs a little bit at the cheese inside of the camera, and then starts to lie again. And that's what Dr. Fauci does. This is why people like Elon Musk tweet, my pronouns are prosecute Fauci. 1.2 million likes. The truth resonates, Elon Musk follows up with. Well, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of resonating online, our next guest is somebody who met Dr. Fauci in the wild, outside of the rat hole. Mr. Rat Doctor got out of his, I don't know, rat hamster wheel and went out to dinner in Washington, D.C. to order a stinky cheese board. Melissa Lively met Dr. Fauci and then took a, a very interesting photo with him. She joins the program now. Melissa, thank you so much for being on the program. I think uh, we should just toss up the image right now. This is very interesting. Went viral across social media. Every, it was everywhere. And um, why don't you talk us through what happened here? <laughs> well, hey, Benny, thanks so much for having me on the show. So happy, so excited to be here. And and you're right. I don't know who let the hamster out of his cage, but he was out, you know, just sniffing around for some cheese in D.C. Uh, when I was there last weekend. And uh, the tiramisu had just landed on the table. I was out at a, a business dinner with clients and friends and saw saw America's doctor and uh, just had to, to get a photo. So, uh, you know, jumped out of my seat. And of course, um, I've been a publicist for 20 years. I'm used to working with people who have egos. Well, nobody has an ego like good old Dr. Fauci, but I've, I've worked with my fair share of interesting people. And, uh, you know, the, the fastest way to his heart is to go right out, up to him and just say, I'm your biggest fan. I have a picture with you. So he just could not resist, you know, just, you know, big old smile for the camera. And, uh, you know, I listen, I'm, I'm, I'm in PR. I know what goes viral. I know how this game works. And I uh, just took the picture that uh, was worth many, many, many thousands, if not millions of words. Yeah. I tweeted out. I said, you spoke for all of us. So I, I'm more interested in the play-by-play. -play. So were you at Fauci's table? Did you see him? You're at a restaurant in D.C., clearly. I can see the wine bottles in the background. Like, so you, you see Fauci across the restaurant, and you just go up to him, say, I'm your biggest fan? Yeah, he was leaving. There is absolutely no way in hell I would break bread with that man. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, I was yeah. not having dinner with Fauci. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's right. You're, yeah, you're liable to have... You're liable to have some Wuhan soup there. Uh, <laughs> what? What? Like, like. So then you just. You, did you know you're going to toss up the bird? You know, I I have kind of my signature move that I that I pull. You know, when I'm taking pictures of somebody <laughs> of note, and you know that was just all I could muster up was just how you know all that deep seated hatred and just disgust for this man who was just a, an absolute liar and a criminal yeah. um and just had to speak on basically on behalf of, of humanity how we yes. all feel. yes how wonderful speak on behalf of all of humanity you did you spoke you spoke for all of us you spoke for all of us americans who you know who, who would like to actually tell dr fauci in person what we think of him. we see him on all these tv programs all they do is fellatiate the guy day and night like it's like they just worship him it's a cult and he doesn't understand that he's the most hated man in America. I think he really does live in a bubble. He doesn't understand that he's he's the most hated man possibly in America. Well, the questions that people were asking me, they were like, how how is it possible that Dr. Fauci like is able to walk the streets and, and go into you know a hot restaurant in DC yeah. and have dinner? And I mean, for one, he had two federal agents with him. So I guess nobody's really getting that close to him. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. Yep. But I mean, it's it's shocking. I mean, and the fact that he he still thinks that people come up to him and, and love him. You know, it's funny because it's like usually the people in his fan club are like have purple hair and their face is full of piercing. So I'm a little surprised that he like wasn't, you know, a little suspect when I walked up and wanted a picture. But he's he's not as smart as he pretends that he is. He's actually pretty <laughs> stupid, in my opinion. Something I like asking people is how did Dr. Fauci hurt you? Because he's hurt everyone's life. I, for instance, had to move my family a thousand miles. 
I was living peacefully and quite happily, actually, on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. I'd been there for 10 years. That's where my job was. That's where my work was. And because of Dr. Fauci's policies, I had to I had to essentially uproot my family uh, at great behest and move down here. Right. And the block became too unsafe. They defunded the police and everything went to hell in Washington, D.C. I don't know where you're located, uh, but everyone has a Dr. Fauci story. What's yours? Uh, well, I mean, where where do I begin? I mean, this man destroyed my business. I mean, mm. I will never forget the 24 hours in which I just received phone call after phone call after phone call of people like we're we're firing you. We can't pay you. You know, your contracts aren't good. You can't. We're not open like our, they're closing down our business. We can't afford to pay you. We, you're our publicist. There's nothing you can publicize if we're not open. So, I mean, that was horrifying. Um, I watched my father-in-law die through a window um, uh. and and with his with his uh, hospital policies, basically, in my opinion, were institutionalized murder. You know, and I fought tooth and nail against hospital administration to get him out of the hospital. They refused. They pumped him full of drugs. They shoved a ventilator down his throat. And, you know, I believe in my heart if we were able to remove him from the hospital, which we couldn't because um, we were unable to advocate for our loved ones in the hospital because of Dr. Fauci's policies. Um, I watched my father-in-law die. My uncle passed away. I lost my business. I lost my sanity. I mean, just being it's just insulting uh, to my intelligence, to everyone's intelligence with this mask nonsense, with this uh, the stupid spots on the floor, the disinfecting groceries, like all of it was absurd and ridiculous and i feel like it was just so demoralizing that a lot of people lost it myself included yeah yeah if you if you i know you would never break bread with him but if you had more than just a passing glance uh with dr fauci what would you tell him what would i tell him um i mean i hope I hope you like it hot because you're going to be in hell for eternity. I mean, that's really my my opinion. I mean, I think he's a disgusting, disgusting person who has no no regard for humanity at all whatsoever. I mean, and it's, you know, we all, you know, are professional people that, that you know, like to make money. But I just cannot ever think of a dollar amount that would be worth, you know, everybody's like, oh, you know, follow the money, follow the money. It's like, how could, like, how could you even, like, think about doing what he did for money. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's just something deeper. Like he's just a very deranged, evil per person at his core. There's just something so wrong with him that would ever think that what he did was okay. And what, yeah. what he did was moral and just and ethical. And, you know, he's supposed you know, a doctor. He, he's the most unethical doctor, you know, that doesn't follow the oath that he took, you know, to care for people and do the right thing. Yes. I mean, he's, he's disgusting. He's disgusting, yes. disgusting creature. Yes. He's worthless to me. Yes. It's hard to find the adjectives for a man who worked to create these super viruses, funded them, even though it was illegal, moved them to China where it's unsafe, promised a pandemic on Trump's first day in office, uh, and, and then made it far, far worse than it ever needed to be. Seven million uh, lives. And he's still or, lying. I mean, he goes he goes in front of Congress. He lies. He goes on TV. He lies. He's a liar to yeah. me. I mean, that is that is the alpha and the omega of 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 a person's character. I mean, if you're a liar, if you'll lie about something small, you'll lie about anything. And and to me, like, that's just that's just it. He's a liar. Yep. 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 He is he is an accomplice to the murder of seven point seven million people. We thank you for at least using one finger to say what we all wish we could say to Dr. Fauci, Melissa Lively. Thanks Appreciate for having me on the program. More accountability. This is good. A very good story. Ohio sues Norfolk Southern over toxic train derailment in East Palestine. Fallout from preventable catastrophe threatens to pollute groundwater and soil for many years to come. This is a very good thing. So Ohio is hopefully taking the right actions here. I don't know how this is going to go, though, because it's the governors of Ohio that signed off on the nuking of this town. So we'll see how it plays out in court. Uh, the company has pledged $20 million in aid to East Palestine. That's in part because of you and because of us and because of this movement and how we are defending these people. We went in hard uh, to defend them, and now we are finally getting results.
We can have real world effects. We can change this country for the better, all of us together. And it makes me really, really happy that at least there's some good thing happening here and that these people are being protected. It is uh, a lot of work. They wanted to brush this under the rug. They wanted to ignore these people. These are not the favored poor. Again, if this happened inside of Philadelphia, boy, it'd be an international incident. They'd go to the UN for funding. But no, this happened inside of uh, Forgotten America that they wish to forget. And they feel like they can do anything to these people, and they can't. These people have humanity. They are beautiful. We went there ourselves and met them. They are wonderful individuals. Uh, and they they deserve much, much better. So this is a, a, a beautiful example of us uh, changing things for the better uh, in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, speaking of people who need protection, I promised you a Jesse Smollett clip. Here's the clip of... Uh, here's the clip of... Um, Jesse Smollett getting attacked, attacked the play-by-play -play by the Nigerian brothers. It's too good to not play. So I saw him out the corner of my eye, and I was like, okay, that's him. Let's go. We gotta go get this empire. Yeah, that's him. That's him. Is that him? That's that neck. It's that neck. Get that neck. Oh, he's moving fast. Come on, let's get him. Get that neck. Let's get him. As we cross the street, we say hey to get his attention. Hey, Nick. Hey. He turned around, looked at us, and that's when we started yelling uh, the famous slurs he wanted us to yell. Hey, aren't you that empire hey, fat Nick? Empire fat Nick. It's MAGA country. Yeah. And then he said, what did you say to me? And then that's when I threw the first punch at him. I held the blow, because I didn't want to hurt him, of course. So I made it look real, but I held it. Then we started tussling, moving, moving around, and then I threw him to the ground. He wanted it to look like he fought back. That was very important for him, because he said, hey, don't just beat my ass. Make it look like I'm fighting back. <laughs> the old the whole time that's 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 what they gave him look they gave a little they gave a little scar he the Osendaro brother goes on to say that he he took his knuckle and he gave him a little scar there <laughs> they pulling his punches make it look like i fought back i'm a tough guy <laughs> call me an n-word call me the f-word call me all of it yeah isn't it wild isn't it isn't it I mean, the people that accuse you of being a Nazi are the ones who want to judge all of us by our racial purity and judge everyone by their skin color. Make sure there's quotas. Get out the head measuring sticks. And the same people that call you uh, Nazis are the ones who pay, pay immigrants to beat them up and call them racial epithets. It just shows you, ladies and gentlemen, that we need a revival in this country. We need some different morality. Hopefully, Jesse Smollett, along with Dr. Fauci, will be going to prison. We, on the other hand, will stay free. Uh, we're going to be heading up to Washington, D.C. Uh, tonight. Uh, I'll be on Tim Cast's show tonight, so please tune in to Tim's channel. Uh, we're going to go to Washington, D.C. and do a lot of cool content. You'll be seeing that very, very shortly. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and while you stay tuned, please remember, real truth, real truth is sitting right before you in the good book. That's why we end every show with a Bible verse. First Chronicles, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. We certainly will be doing that as we go to Washington, D.C. That is a, it's a dark place. And there's some bad energy in Washington, D.C. That is for certain and worse than it's ever been. We're going to expose it. We're going up there and we're going to do some, we have some Pretty cool stuff booked, so we're looking forward to that. Ladies and gentlemen, we are victorious. We are victorious. It doesn't matter what happens on this earthly kingdom. We are victorious here in this life. We already have the victory. We structure our lives correctly, God, family, country, and that is our guiding star, and that is our guiding light. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you back here on Friday. My name is Benny. This is The Benny Show. See ya! <laughs>